Hello. Hello, is this Gordon Lightfoot? Yes. This is Randy Patterson with Boomerosity and Everything Knoxville Magazine in East Tennessee. I got gotcha. you. All hey, right. How sir. are you? Where am I reaching at? Up in Ontario? Yeah, I'm in uh, Toronto. All right. Well, I used to go to Toronto on business. Man, beautiful city. That's interesting. Your career is about to span seven decades. I mean, there's very few of your peers that can say anything close to that. And I guess the first question is, do you think this is a career path you want to stick with or not? <laughs> but in all seriousness, how does that affect you? What do you think of that when you... Well, I, I think I better be prepared. <laughs> I think I had better. I, I, I think I had better be prepared. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I stay prepared. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have a group of people working with me, and they're all prepared. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're re- ready to go. Mm-hmm. We go out seven times a year. We we go we go on tour seven times a year. Wow, wow, that's amazing. And we, we do about each time about about ten or eleven shows. My goodness! Each time we go out. So at the end of the year, we've done about eighty shows. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we play all over North America. Good. And you'll be coming here to East Tennessee this. Uh, uh, gosh, next month, sometime in July, towards the end of July in Chattanooga. I'll be. I hope to see you there. Yeah, that's that's the indoors. You know, yeah. we, we we try to keep things indoors. You know, like in the in the summer weather. Yeah. Although we do festivals, but mm-hmm. but but I have played uh, uh, Chattanooga before. Is there a couple of times already? And uh, which... so we'll, we'll get back and then pick up the old vibes. There you go. Have you been to the Songbirds Museum there yet? No, the but maybe I should. <laughs> There's a lot of guitars, man. It's it's guitar porn there. Oh, I'll warn God. you. But uh, it's oh, a fascinating thing. I'm sure they'll give you the VIP tour there if you ask for it. But uh, but in your in your career, you've had to see so many changes. And in your opinion, what are the best and worst changes you've seen in the music business over the years? Ah. That's a question that I, I cannot answer. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I can't. I cannot answer. I um, it, it certainly evolves. You know. Um, oh, sometimes uh, it, you you know things go into different uh, uh, different modes. You know, like uh, uh, country music goes more into becomes more rock and roll. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's. Now, that's the best example I can think of. The, 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 the rest of it just it just keeps rolling along, you know, and it keeps changing. You know, we got we've got we've got the, the you know the hip hop music is is is, uh, is out there big time right now. You know, people like to tap their toes and dance to that stuff. Mm-hmm. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. <laughs> Well, do you think the music business is broken today, or what's your opinion of the music business? Well, it's like, like it's ongoing, and, and the, the, the uh, you know, a, if, if your stuff is good enough, it's going to make it on the radio somewhere. Yeah, the cream's going to come to the top of the, you know, come to the top. Mm-hmm. It has to, uh, you know, like if, it's, if, if it's, for instance, take Drake for instance. Uh, Drake is building a house right across the street from me, right? Wow. Right now. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a big, a big uh, thing around Toronto here. Everybody's been going on for about two and a half years. They've been building over there. I've never met him, but I wanted to know what, what his, why his record was like. For, at one point, number one on the record chart for five weeks. Mm-hmm. Number one on the record chart for five weeks. And I, I said, I wonder what's so special about it. About it, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I, I went and, and bought one, and it was just like like a great rap record. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, there's like the great vocal, the uh, the great arrangements, and, and, and the great rap. Mm-hmm. You know, those those things. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of new record, you came out with a remastered greatest hits thing, and you're in Canada. Um, they're doing that documentary, or have that documentary out on you, and uh, but no word on when it's coming down here and I can't wait to see it but tell me about the record and uh, what's been the reception on both the record and the documentary so far that you can tell well okay the record is, is from some uh, uh, some newly discovered material mm-hmm. 
which I had forgotten I, I owned. Really, at, at that point, I, I didn't really have enough for another another album, but when I found this stuff, just accidentally one day while cleaning out my office, mm-hmm. it became apparent that I had enough uh, material available. And it, it was interesting, too, because it was done just before I had a serious illness. Mm-hmm. And I was at, like, full strength. I was playing really strong on guitar, and my vocal was at really at a peak at that point. It was around about, about the year 2000. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It all, the, 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 the stuff was written over a three-year period there. And I, I dug it out, and, and it was so good that, it, that I kept it all. And it, it's a, uh, I'm able to work on and do some orchestrating, and mm-hmm. the stuff sounds great. You know, it, uh, So that's going to be my 21st album. It's all original material. My goodness. That's amazing. And the documentary, how do you feel about the documentary? And uh, what can you, uh, since we're here in the States, we can't see it yet. What can you tell us about it? Well, I'll tell you, my wife and I have watched it together now four times. <laughs> <laughs> my, wife, my wife, Kim, and I mm-hmm. have watched it now four times. And she's so philosophical about it that I, I really can't believe it. i got to give her great credit. Mm-hmm. Was there anything about it that kind of surprised you? Well, you know, I consider my my personal life to a certain degree, but it but it, it mostly it covers the titles. I mean, I have about twenty five titles in there, mm-hmm. and and uh, uh, a lot of uh, photographs of everyone from Elvis Presley right on down. You know, like performing my songs right down to to uh, who I really want to talk about. Who did uh, Black Angel? Like Gordon Downey. Mm-hmm. who just passed away last year. Mm-hmm. Gordon Downey did a, I had one called Black Day in July, which got banned way back when. I didn't know, you know, and, and they did a great version of it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, you mentioned Elvis, and I loved his cover of Early Morning Rain that, it, that they did on the Aloha from yeah, Hawaii oh, yeah, special. Yeah. That, that oh, was, was amazing. Good, there was good stuff out there. What? And I'd be working with Johnny Cash, you know, and people like that. And, mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was it was fun to have some really up to date stuff too. It shows shows my band the way it is right now. It's a five piece band, mm-hmm. you know. Everybody's all all ready to roll. They're they're a great bunch of guys. Good. I have about fourteen people uh, in my entourage. Wow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. My yeah. goodness. Well, what can what can fans expect on this tour, and especially the uh, Chattanooga stop? What uh, what what can they look forward to on that? Well, okay, they're going to get uh, uh, they're, they're going to have a, a, a two set show with a twenty minute intermission, mm-hmm. and each set is about, about fifteen minutes long. If they can sit through that, they're <laughs> they're welcome. You know, some of these people, I mean, my goodness, they'll go like a fairly for three hours up there. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I like to be polite with my audience, and and time is one thing that I take very serious. I don't like to to work too long. Right. Well, it, 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 and even the most avid fan can have a hard time sitting through that long. I know the experience Hendrix things. Yeah, yeah, Some, yeah. Somebody told and we me. We give them the best stuff that, that we got. We give them the, the best of everything that we've got. We mm-hmm. really do. And, and believe me, they play it well. We've got a great, you know, a good, <laughs> a good little orchestra here. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's, you know, it's. By the time we get to the, the wreck of the Edmonds, it's still. I mean, <laughs> they're starting to get really excited. <laughs> Well, you've done a lot, and like you said, you know your your your, your albums. It's your twentieth uh, or so album and such. What haven't you done that you want to do as far from a career perspective? What you know, is there any kind of certain kind of album, certain kind of music, certain kind of I don't know. Some people like to do musicals to their music. Alice Cooper told that me that a, a year or so ago that you know is getting his stuff put onto the Broadway stage or what. Is there anything? you know, that you haven't done yet that is still on your bucket list to do musically? It always comes to mind that, that, that Springsteen did his Broadway show. Yeah, yeah. And it's there on Net, Netflix. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I mean, that's a great show. They, they stay there for an hour. I, I might do something like that, but, you know, I don't think I could. you got to be bring Spring, Bruce Springsteen to get on Broadway like for yeah. <laughs> a whole year. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's he, he's one of my biggest influences. I I love that guy. I love mm-hmm. his work. Yeah. Him and Bob Dylan and and 
There's quite a few other people too, mm-hmm. you know. Well, speaking of influence, Leonard, Leonard Cohen, you know. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. What your I'm working on a book right now, actually two different books, and 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 you you just brought up some people that I that kind of fit into this, and I touched on it once already, and that's Elvis. What are your thoughts about Elvis, and and you know what, especially when he did your music? Did you ever meet him? What was his influence? What are your what are your unique thoughts about Elvis Presley? Well, they covered that song, "Early Morning Rain," just about better than anybody, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, it takes in a whole whopping bunch of people because I tell you, a lot of people recorded that song and they all did a great job. I like George Hamilton IV doing it best best of all. Oh, cool. But 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 El- but Elvis, yes, I, I, I mean, I almost jumped out of my car when I heard it on the car radio because that's the first time I knew that even he had done the song until I heard it one day on my my car radio while I was driving down the highway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know about it. My goodness. And all of a sudden there it was, and I said, oh, my goodness, you know, it, he's, he's done it, you know. Um, I remember I went and bought, bought a guitar when I was 14 when I, when I, when I first started hearing Elvis Presley. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> That made you want to play the guitar, and there huh? it was. There he was. Wow. You know, that was about 15 years ago. I just about jumped out of my car. <laughs> Except yeah. I was doing about 75 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you didn't jump out. That's <laughs> what? Did you ever get to meet him? Uh, I came close. Could have. They got, out, they got away from me in Buffalo. I was supposed to meet him at the... Uh, Backstage at the at the hockey arena there when they played there, but I didn't make it back in time. They'd left by the time I fought my way back there. Oh my goodness, that's too bad. That's too bad. So well, I used to go right after the show. Yeah. So he was right. It made me. He was. We were going to meet him, all right, but but I just I just couldn't get back there. Yeah. In, in time, they had they had to go. Right. Well, and another question that involves my book is everybody asks the question, Beatles or the Stones? If they were to ask you that, who would you, which one would you pick and why? Okay, I got to take the Stones because they're, they're still going at it and they're playing this weekend right up here near Toronto. They're doing a great big show. They, they, yep. <laughs> they're expecting about 25,000 people up there. Wow. Up north of the city, the Brony Stones. See, you got to choose the Stones because they're, they're still doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, God, you know, I mean, I, what, what else can you say? I mean, they're, they're still a band. The way they're still, they're still out there doing it. Yep. Playing, and playing their music. It's amazing. Yes, I, am, I, I'm amazed that, that I am still doing it. Yeah. And why? Why do you still do it? What because I'm like I'm over eighty, you know. You're not supposed to be doing this when you're over eighty, so they say. You know, so if they're playing music, they, they tell me some people play until they're ninety. I, I mean, all you got to do is uh, prime examples: Willie Nelson, Tony Bennett. You know, mm-hmm. they're still they're still playing their music. My goodness, they're. they're and I say they're not get, getting any younger. <laughs> <laughs> what keeps you doing it? Because I, I really lo- love the work. I, I do, and, I, and I, I feel confident. I like my material. You know, I, I stay ready to perform. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you always got to be like in a state of readiness. Go out seven times a year. But those, you know, those little month-long stretches in between there, you know, they go by pretty quick. Yeah, they do. <laughs> and you got to get back out there again and doing it. And uh, <laughs> so each one's like it's, its own little trip and... and uh, of course, you've got to make arrangements too for the uh, for the work permits and all that stuff all the time. Been doing that for fifty six years. <laughs> you must have it down to a science now, huh? I could have moved down to the states if I if I, if I wanted to, but the, it was it was my songwriting that, that got me accepted by the industry down there originally. Yeah. So it was my songwriting deal that allowed them to petition on my behalf mm-hmm. for the, for the work permits. So I've got one more question for you, and then we'll wrap up. You know, I hope you're around for many, many, many more years. And I ask people of your stature in the business this question, so I'm not trying to be macabre or anything. And I'm sure you've been asked this question in different ways a lot over the years. But 
when the way I put it to people is when you step off the tour bus of life up at the great gig in the sky, to borrow from Pink Floyd, how do you want to be remembered, and what do you hope your legacy is? My, my answer is always so simple and so stupid. <laughs> that I took care of business. <laughs> that I took care of business. Yeah. <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. Okay. Well, Gordon, I, I appreciate this time. I am going to try to get uh, get tickets to your show. Maybe if I can, I'll uh, maybe get be able to work my way backstage to shake your hand. And, and uh, But more than anything, I want to thank you for, for both for taking this time, but more importantly, just the great music you've uh, you've provided and you know I've listened to for okay. for 40 50 years now and and uh, uh, it, it just really means a lot to me and uh, again the, just honored and blown away the, to be able to talk to you personally and uh, look forward to seeing you in Chattanooga in a few weeks all right you and you're Randy P Randy Pat I know that. Yep. Randy Patterson. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll put you on the back on the backstage list. It'll be it'll be in our, our computer. Okay, super. I appreciate that, and we'll we'll see you at the, right, at the Tivoli Theater in Chattanooga, then, sir. I, it, that's what. Yeah, that's what we got here, Tivoli Tivoli Theater. Yeah, it's a beautiful theater. It's kind of like the old Fox theaters that you see, and uh, it's very ornate. I just saw Peter Frampton there Sunday night, and uh, ah, uh, yeah. It's he's a, a he's a good example too. Now there's a good example of a guy who, who keeps it together. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's his farewell tour yeah. because of that muscle disease he has. But man, he put it out there, and he did it for about yeah. a little over two hours. Put yeah. on a great show, and uh, uh, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm so familiar with this work. Well, we're looking forward to a great show by you, Gordon, and uh, look forward to meeting you backstage in uh, about three weeks. Then. Thank you very much. Well, okay. Take care. Have a good Bye. evening, sir. This show was edited and produced by Mike McClellan. The original music, Roll the Dice, was written and produced by Quentin Hope. And Randy Patterson was your host and executive producer.